So it's important to know what you're doing. Maybe one of these days I will. Well, I'm on a quest to find the right tree to harvest to mill my first 16 foot log. This pine over here looks like it may have some bug damage. So this might be the prime candidate here. It's actually, man, I think we got an easy 16 foot up the side of this. And you can see the damage on the bark of this. These are the kind of trees that aren't going to live a lot longer with the bugs eating them. And man, this is in a great location for me to take down. It's about the right size for me to get quite a bit of lumber out of. I think this is the move right here. And one thing we're not going to do is leave the side by side parked right there. Well, hey there, hobby homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. My name's Lucas, and we're sharing our hobbies here on 38 acres in eastern Kentucky. And today, I'm about to do something I've never done on my sawmill, and that's mill a 16-foot log. Couple of hurdles. First thing is, I can't pick it up. The second thing is, I need to turn it around because this is the small end. It's 14 and a half inches, and that end is 16 inches. So I want to put the small end closest to the mill head. So I'm going to turn it around. I have my land top three point skid steer quick attach conversion on here with my forks on the back of the tractor. And what I have decided to do is go pick up a log with the grapple so I have some weight on the front. And then I'm going to back under this, pick it up, turn it around and get it over to the mill. Now there are some hurdles with that because I can't tilt my forks. So that means once I get it leveled up with the bunks, I'm gonna have to roll this off of there, but I think we can do it. Okay, let's see what we can do here. not going as easy as I expected it to. I really thought with the three-point forks I'd be able to pick this up just fine, but it's not working. I think I'm going to be able to get it on here. We're gonna get this, boys. We're gonna get this.
All right, so I got to figure out All right, y'all. This is the moment I have been waiting for. We'll turn on some lights here so everybody can see good. Still got water, yep. All right, guys, first 16 foot log. Let's do this. Guys, 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 this is exciting. All right, I don't even know if I can pick up this slab. I need my tractor over here, I guess. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Well, this is tricky. There we go. I knew I made it wide enough, but I didn't. <laughs> Well, I can tell you one thing. Milling a 16-foot log is a whole lot harder than milling a 10-foot log. A whole lot. Everything is, like, exponentially harder. We'll be needing a log turner next. Stout, stout. Right. Here we go. I figure it takes a lot longer to uh, spin one of these logs around and get everything set up for the next cut, so might as well kill the engine in between each cut. Got a square on there. Looks like we're in pretty good shape. Not bad, not bad. Let's Ah, oh, yeah. Golden, golden.
It's a brand new day. <laughs> Yesterday, in the heat, my GoPro batteries crapped out, I crapped out, it was just rough. I was wore out, it was hot, and I finally just gave up. So, all right, we're 15 foot, nine, basically 16 foot will get us all the way back in there. Yeah, it just was, you know, the whole putting the log on the mill was a whole lot harder than I expected it to be. And it was brutally hot and the sun beating on the cameras had the batteries dying on me and I just wasn't making progress. So when my batteries kicked out, I was like, enough's enough, I'm calling it a day. And man, what a difference a day makes. It is, it's like, it's 78 degrees out here and overcast, it feels like fall. It's uh, super nice out here. So where I finished up is I got the first two by 10 and it's actually like 10 and a half inches wide, 16 foot, three inches long, I think. So yeah, got the first board cut. So I think I'm going to figure out exactly how long I need because, well, let me take you over here and show you. I went ahead rather than waste this two by 10 here by cutting off more slab i went ahead and left some bark on this end right here i mean them suckers are heavy but i want to know how much i'll be able to cut off of here and whether it'll still be useful i figured i'd just go ahead and, and make me a tube of tin out of this one and uh, then we'll get serious about making the next headers and all of that so let me see how long this sucker actually turned out to be now I told you the way my mill was configured before, I could mill about three inches over 10 foot was the max that I could get. And I actually, this is 16 foot four, and I think really, if I had to, I could get a couple more inches out of it. I think you could get a 16 foot six log. So we've got 14 foot of solid structure here. All right, I think I'm gonna have to get my lumber uncovered back there so I can stack this stuff off to the side. Man, I'm excited about this. This is some big lumber. This is expensive stuff. Okay, so here's what I decided. I was kind of looking at span charts to figure out how far you're supposed to span with different dimensions of lumber. And a two by 10 is good for a deck joist to span 16 foot. So on something like, you know, a, a header opening with low snow load, metal roof, that sort of thing, I feel like spanning a 16 foot opening like this is going to be just fine for that, especially when we double them up the way that we do. I think what I've decided is since I had a nice, good specimen of a log that I can get 16 foot two by tens out of. That's what I'm going to go with. And these are actually a little bit bigger than two by tens because they measure 10 and a half inches. And I think these will be good for headers for any buildings or storage sheds or anything that I make. And those are, you know, pretty expensive boards to go buy. So I'll go ahead and make, I thought about breaking it down, making some two by sixes or two by fours or something like that out of it. But in most cases, if you're using a two by four or a two by six, then you're not gonna be spanning 16 foot. So you don't need 16 foot lumber anyway. So I feel like my best bet is to just get as many two by tens out of this as I can. And that's what we have this can't set up for. So I'm gonna drop my log stops down so that we don't hit them, so that we don't hit them, so that we don't hit them and I'm gonna mill this up into two buys and see how many I can get. Might as well go ahead and pull that out. I was mentioning to a friend of the channel the other day the fact that I'm not just crazy about this mill scale on this so i'm going to order me one of the magnetic ones from hudson and use that i believe but for right now this is what we've got so go ahead and get this set on here so we'll go to the inch and a half just below that
Did I mention I love it? All right, we'll give you guys a good look at this nice board that we just made. Yeah, we are right on the money. Ten and a half. Really, really, really excited about this. Now I'll tell you, <laughs> I built my building just a little too tight. I wanted to be able to span it with 16 foot boards so my openings are like um, 15 foot six, I think. Which means if I'm doing a 16 foot four log, I have to kind of come in at an angle and swing it around. And with the equipment I have, that's not easy to do. Everything is a little bit snug. I probably, if I had it to do over again, I would go just a little bit bigger in each direction. But I was trying to kind of use dimensions that I would be able to mill and work with. But, you know, I ended up buying headers and posts anyway, so I could have just done what I needed to do. But live and learn. It's still pretty awesome. I'm going to share with you the importance of dropping a tree correctly even though I don't hardly know how to do it yet if you don't cut it the way that it will fall without damaging it then you end up with a chunk like this in the middle that's kind of ruined the last foot and a half of one of these 16 foot boards so it's important to know what you're doing maybe one of these days I will Remember what I was telling you guys about how I like the little welded on nub so you can take your log stops out when you get down to the bottom so everything's out of the way? Well, I went through and I dropped my log stops, but I missed one. Brand new blade. This is the first log. Two kinds of people. Sawmill owners who have hit their log stops and ones who will. Let's see if it'll still finish cutting this. Man. Well, I'll be able to finish this log with it, but I'm gonna have to change the blade. I was having such a good day too, man. So excited about it. Everything working good and then I just pull a dummy. Got her nice, look at that. Nice and neat. And check out the end of that board. You see what happens when your tree splinters on the button. I was talking to my uncle Andy a while back who has a, a wood miser. I don't know what, what he has, L, LT30 or I, I'm not sure which model he has, but you know, big, uh, everything hydraulic and the whole works, you know, he built his cabin, his garage and all kinds of stuff with it. He's a woodworker and that's kind of what he's always been into. So doing it for years, he's really good at what he does. 
So I'm always a little bit embarrassed to share what I'm doing on here. And the last time I talked to him, he said, I'll watch your videos and I'm like, oh, Luke, don't do it like that. But then I think, well, he's got to learn like I did. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I mean, I'll take advice when people give me advice and try to, to better myself. But, you know, a whole lot of times, the only way you're going to figure it out is to just get out here and do it. And so that's what I'm doing. And I show you guys my mistakes and the things that go wrong because that's okay. That's all part of it. I'm still enjoying it. It's a blast. I think this last one I need to flip over before I cut it. Let me take a look at it and see what we got here. Glad I ain't lifting this sucker up in the air right now. Alright, so I ended up with six tuba tens. One's a 14 footer and five are 16 footers. Not bad. And I still have seven logs over there out of that one tree left to cut up. I'm gonna get all kinds of tuba fours out of it. One tree that I think I figured out all those little holes on the tree that I cut aren't from the pine beetles, but from maybe sap suckers. We have a lot of woodpeckers around here. And I don't know if it's woodpeckers that do that, but I was reading, and if the lines are in a, if the holes are in a straight line, then I think it's sap suckers doing that. So if you guys know, comment and let me know what's putting all the holes all over my pine tree. And also let me know if that was going, going to kill it, because that was the theory I operated under. And that's why I took that one down. Until next time, get outside and enjoy God's creation. It's beautiful out here. Y'all have a good day.